Real estate, the oldest asset in the book, is still teaching us new tricks on building wealth. Shocking, but true. Real estate is made about 90% of the world's millionaires, so why not you? In this series, we're not just talking about buying a house. We're digging into strategies that could turn a single investment into a cash machine. We're looking at buy and hold secrets inspired by the legendary rich dad, poor dad, rental property, gold mines, wholesale deals that could flip your finances, house hacking hacks that can cut your living costs to zero, and the power of pooling money in real estate syndication. And trust me, this isn't your typical finance talk. I'm going to show you the insider tips to make you go. Why didn't I start sooner? So buckle up. Let's make your money work harder than you do. Let's get started. Buy and hold strategy. This isn't just about buying property. It's about holding on to it for the long run. Think about it like planting a tree. You don't get fruit the next day, right? But give it time and you've got apples for years. That's what Robert Kiyosaki taught me in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Assets feed you, liabilities eat you. So here's the scoop. You buy a piece of real estate, but instead of selling it when the market's hot, you hold on to it. And while you're holding, something cool happens. It's called appreciation. Over time, real estate tends to go up in value. Not overnight, but over time. And that's not just me saying it. It's what history shows us. In the US, for example, average real estate prices have increased since the 1940s. Sure, there are dips and dives along the way, but the overall trend? Up, up, and away. But appreciation isn't the only ace up this strategy's sleeve. There's this thing called leverage. Say you buy a $100,000 property with a $20,000 down payment. If that property goes up by 5% in a year, that's $5,000. You might think, hey, that's just a 5% return. But you're forgetting you only put down 20 grand. So that $5,000 is actually a 25% return on your initial investment. Kiyosaki's all about this, using smarter, not harder money. And then there's rent. While you're waiting for your property to go up in value, someone's paying you to live there. It's like having a golden goose. You're getting paid to hold on to an asset that's getting more valuable. Now the rental market can swing, sure. But over the past 30 years, average rent prices have skyrocketed. That's more money in your pocket every month. Now, don't get me wrong. Buy and hold isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. It's a get-rich-sure scheme. It takes patience and a bit of nerve. You'll deal with tenants, toilets, and trash. But for those who stick it out, the rewards can be huge. Like Kiyosaki says, the rich invest in time, the poor invest in money. And that's the cornerstone of buy and hold, time. Give it time, and you're not just building wealth. You're securing a future that's as solid as the ground your property's built on. And that's the story of buy and hold. It's not flashy, it's not fast, but it's tried, it's true. And it's how the steady win the race. So let's keep going. Learn more and grow wealthier step by solid step. Two rental properties. This one's about becoming a landlord and it's not for the faint-hearted, but man, it can pay off. I picked up the book on rental property investing by Brandon Turner, and let me tell you, it's a game changer. Turner says, investing in rental properties is a great way to create a consistent income stream. And he's spot on. It's all about that steady cash flow. So here's the skinny. You buy a property, someone else lives in it and they pay you rent every month. Sounds simple, right? But the secret sauce is finding the right property. Location, location, location. You've heard it before. But it's not just about the prettiest house on the block. It's about schools, shops, and how easy it is to get around. Now the money talk. Did you know that on average, rent prices have jumped more than 3% annually for the past few decades? That's a lot of extra dough in your pocket year after year. And with a good property, you can even beat those averages. But wait, there's more. It's not just the rent. It's also about the benefits at tax time. Depreciation, for instance, it's like a magic trick where your property loses value on paper, so you pay less tax, even though it's probably going up in real value. And the repairs, write them off. Mortgage interest, write that off too. Uncle Sam can actually help you grow your wealth if you know the rules, but let's not sugarcoat it. Being a landlord comes with headaches. You'll get calls about leaky faucets at the worst times. That's why Turner advises, build a team of great people to make your investment a success. He means find good plumbers, handymen, and property managers. They're worth their weight in gold. Remember, you're not just renting out a space. You're providing someone a home. That's a responsibility. Treat your tenants right, and they'll treat your property right. That means less turnover, less hassle, and more money in the long run. So you want to build wealth with rental properties. It's about smart buys, good management, and treating it like the business it is. Keep it up. 
and one day you could be sitting pretty with a whole bunch of homes ticking away like little cash registers. And that's the lowdown on rental properties. It's not going to make you rich by next Thursday, but it's a solid strategy that stood the test of time. Let's keep this journey going and turn those real estate dreams into cold, hard cash. 3. Wholesaling If you're scratching your head wondering what that is, you're not alone. It's like the backstage pass of real estate, where deals are made before a property ever hits the market. Here's the lowdown, straight from the book on investing in real estate with no and low money down by Brandon Turner. Wholesaling is where you, the wholesaler, contract a home with a seller, then flip that contract to a buyer for a higher price. You never lay a brick or paint a wall. You just connect dots and collect the difference. Sounds simple, but the devil's in the details. You've got to be a detective, hunting for those under the radar deals. It's grunt work, sifting through listings, knocking on doors, and always, always networking. But when you find that diamond in the rough, the payoff can be sweet. Here's a nugget for you. Most people don't know that a lot of properties never get listed. I mean, why wait for a buyer when you can sell to a wholesaler right away? It's a win-win. Sellers get a quick sale, and you get a chance to make a profit. But here's the kicker. You make money on the buy, not the sell. Turner says, your profit is determined when you buy the property, not when you sell it. You've got to snag that property at the price low enough to turn a profit and still leave room for your buyer to make some green. Now let's talk numbers. Some wholesalers make a few grand per deal, others tens of thousands. It varies like the weather, but the key is volume. The more deals you close, the more dough you roll in. Ethics, though, are the backbone of this gig. Don't promise what you can't deliver. Be upfront with sellers about what you're doing. Transparency builds trust and trust builds business. Plus, nobody likes a shady dealer. One more thing, you've got to move fast. Wholesaling is like speed chess. You've got to think on your feet. Make quick decisions and stay a couple of moves ahead. Hesitate and you might miss out. So there you have it. Wholesaling is the fast-paced, find-it-and-flip-it side of real estate. It's not about owning property. It's about owning the deal. And if you've got the hustle, it could fill your wallet without emptying your bank account. Keep at it and who knows? You might just become the go-to person for off-market deals. That's wholesaling for you. Quick, clever, and a little bit crafty. Let's keep this train moving. There's more to learn, more to earn. 4. House Hacking the term might sound like we're doing something illicit, but it's as legit as it gets. It's a hack in the life hack sense, a clever strategy to outsmart the usual homeowner expenses. House hacking, what's that you ask? I learned from rich dad, poor dad, that it's about making your home work for you. Robert Kiyosaki, he's the guy who changed the game for me, says, your home is not an asset unless it's putting money in your pocket. And that's house hacking in a nutshell. Here's the deal. You buy a multi-unit property, live in one unit, and rent out the others. The rent you collect hopefully covers your mortgage and maybe the bills too. Imagine living for free and maybe even making a few bucks on top. This isn't just some pie-in-the-sky idea. According to a Forbes report, young homeowners are increasingly turning to house hacking as a way to offset living costs. And why not? With property prices rising, who wouldn't want to trim down their biggest expense? Housing. But house hacking takes a bit of savvy. First, you've got to find the right property. It's got to be livable for you and appealing to renters. This means looking for places with separate entrances, bathrooms and kitchens. Privacy is key. Then there's financing. If you play your cards right, you could get a residential loan instead of a commercial one. That's big. We're talking lower down payments and better interest rates. But you've got to live there for at least a year usually. That's the trade-off. Now becoming a landlord overnight can be a shock to the system. It's not just collecting rent checks. You've got to fix things, find tenants, and handle the midnight. The toilet is overflowing calls, but the hustle can pay off your mortgage. That's like someone else filling your piggy bank while you sleep. Let's sprinkle in some stats. Did you know that the average rent for a single bedroom apartment in the US has been climbing up over the years? That means each room you rent out could be more valuable than you think. Plus you learn the ropes of real estate investing while you live. Kiyosaki says, the best way to learn is to do that's hands-on experience money can't buy. And if you get really good, you could turn house hacking into your stepping stone to bigger real estate deals. House hacking is resourceful, it's smart, and it's a solid first step into the world of real estate investing. It's about making your first home an investment, not just a place to crash. Keep at it, and you could say goodbye to rent or mortgage payments sooner than you think. There you have it, the magic of house hacking. It's all about getting creative with your living situation to open up financial freedoms you never thought possible. Ready for the next chapter?
there's more to explore and even more ways to make your money work for you. 5. Real Estate Syndication Think of it as teaming up to tackle the big-ticket real estate deals. It's a bit like a group of friends pooling their money to buy a pizza, except instead of pizza, it's an apartment complex or office building. Ken McElroy in The ABCs of Real Estate Investing puts it bluntly, syndication is about leveraging other people's money to increase your buying power. It's not about what you have, it's about what you can control. So here's the play. You find an investment-worthy property. Maybe it's a high-rise apartment building or a strip mall with potential, but it's out of your solo financial league. That's where syndication comes in. You gather investors who have the cash, but maybe not the know-how or the time to manage a property. You're the maestro, conducting the orchestra. You manage the property and the investment. They provide the funds. Here's the cool part. As the syndicator, you get a slice of the pie for putting the deal together, a property acquisition fee. And since you're managing the investment, you'll typically get a piece of the monthly cash flow and the profits upon sale too. But it's not just about collecting checks. You've got to be sharp. The real estate market can be as unpredictable as the weather. Your investors are trusting you to read the skies and steer the ship through any storms. And don't forget the due diligence. The best deals are often the ones you don't make. A single bad investment can tarnish your reputation. It's like my granddad used to say, measure twice, cut once. Here's a stat to chew on. The global real estate market was valued at around $9.6 trillion in 2019. Even a tiny fraction of that pie could be life-changing. Syndication opens the door to that vast market. Of course, you'll need a good lawyer because syndication has its own set of legal hoops. It's all about compliance, transparency, and good communication. Keep in mind a syndication is only as strong as its weakest link. Choose your partners and deals wisely. As McElroy writes, partnership is the golden rule in syndication. Another interesting tidbit. Historically, real estate has often outperformed the stock market, providing a tangible asset that can appreciate over time. Real estate syndication taps into that growth potential without requiring you to have all the capital yourself. And think about the impact. Good syndication can transform neighborhoods, create jobs and build communities. It's powerful stuff. There you have it. Real estate syndication is not just about making money. It's about pooling resources, sharing expertise, and creating something bigger than you could on your own. Ready to team up and take on the real estate world? Syndication might be your ticket to the big league. Next up, we'll explore even more strategies to build that wealthy future. Stick with me. If you're finding value in this video, hit the subscribe button to keep up with our latest uploads.